I just realized something by looking at a comment I read, reading a comment not too long ago. And I've noticed the divisions, they're using divisions as well as similarities to keep people distracted by nonsense. They're creating all these false dichotomies, like Christian versus Islam, but, they, but they're ignoring the Muslims being killed by the Buddhists in Myanmar. They're focusing on the Muslims killing Christians. They're focusing on the Jews killing the Muslims, but they're, they're keeping it Abrahamic to, to make it understandable to the West. And then they're throwing out all these other little smaller distractions to keep everybody just looking away from what's going on. I mean, here's the deal. The homosexual gun runner, Chris Stevens, was smuggled into Libya on a fishing boat full of weapons to give to the U.S.-backed terrorist group Al-Qaeda as well as the LIFG with the intention of overthrowing Gaddafi for trying to trade oil and gold dinar. Setting up a telecommunication system for Africa that wasn't a tool of the West, and trying to stabilize and militar uh, militarize Africa on the whole. Now these guys that were armed to the teeth, backed by U.S. soldiers in French planes and drones, as well as backed by NATO troops that were on the ground, dethroned Gaddafi, and then carpet bomb after carpet bombing the cities, and killing thousands of innocent civilians while letting loose hordes of Salafis from Saudi Arabia and Qatar, as well as those locked up in prison that America paid Qaddafi to keep at bay. This is the same mercenaries, some of are Chechen, some are Russian that have nothing to do with Islam, that are murdering people in Bahrain, Syria, and Pakistan. These people were set loose on, on, on entire cities, killed entire ethnicities, and sacked their towns. They still attack the Warfala tribe today, as well as the Tuaregu. The same Gaddafi they were paying to fight these guys are now being let loose to slaughter these people wholesale. So there's basically they're an American sleeper cell. And, and, and the thing is, the weapons trafficker Chris Steven, he was then made ambassador and he kept the weapons flowing. He probably had boy lovers or something too. Who knows if that's relevant. The fact is, the whole Benghazi thing happened in an information center when Chris Stevens, the gun runner's Al Qaeda security detail, abandoned him. And he was killed by Gaddafi supporters who so stripped him, sodomized him, then shot him. Later on, his cowardly little Al Qaeda escorts came back dressed him, then dragged him out and claimed that a bunch of disinfo about uh, smoke inhalation and all this other crap. And now they're focusing on this for what? Why are they focusing on this? I mean, look. As soon as this happened, people were calling calling BS. It's irrelevant. They start trying to blame it on a movie. These things are clearly distractions. It's a smoke screen, that's all it is to distract you. And then you got the Boston bombing. It took the lives of three innocent people and it was executed by Blackwater agents who people filmed. And it avoids the fact that this Machiavellian Republican, Ronald O. Thatcher, is working to remove the toothless legislation and further benefit Wall Street and his masters like Soros and Brzezinski. He's doing this by ending competition, deregulation, and taxpayer coverage of derivatives to increase monopolies. All while you're distracted by things like the Benghazi scandal where they killed a gun runner, Chris Stevens, the beheadings done by MI6 agents, both of which were born Christians, which is how I know they're MI6 agents, or MI5 agents, excuse me, who happen to be in Kenya. Why were they in Kenya? These are MI5 guys. They're not dead. They've been moved somewhere else. You're going to see them again in the streets. Go find a video. Look at their faces. I guarantee you'll see them again somewhere. And then you got the stabbing of a soldier in France. You know why they, you know why they're doing all this? These soldiers, soldiers, soldiers getting killed so that they can normalize you to see soldiers marching down the streets everywhere. 
They're normalizing you to see Muslims as the enemy, black people as the enemy. These immigrants are going to take over the country. The immigrants are ruining the economy. But you don't look at the derivatives gamblers. You don't look at the fact that they're making the things that they did that ruined the economy legal. Everything they're doing in America, they're doing in Australia. They're doing it in the United Kingdom. Chancellor Merkel's making this shit legal in Germany. These people have gotten off scot-free, and they're going to foot the bill to the taxpayer. So now you're paying for your own fucking demise, basically. The global confederacy is taking shape with America on top. And they're going to have people welcoming more soldiers to protect them from this Goldstein Muhammad threat. They invoke a terrifying internal and external enemy, immigrants and Mohammedanism, while ignoring things like the Buddhists slaughtering the Muslims in Myanmar. And they create gulags all over the world. They've got secret gulags in, in Cuba. They're focusing on the Cuba one to distract from the one in Syria to distract from the one in the United Kingdom, the, 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 the secret gulags all over the United States, the one down in Costa Rica, there's a lot of them. Now, uh, now Islam's clearly the, the criminal caste that they have. They, they can't really use the blacks, the blacks really fight it. People, people around the world kind of know, if they come here and they'll play the game, like they'll, they'll, they'll tell uh, Chinese people, don't sit next to the blacks. Don't talk to the blacks. Stay away from them. They'll tell them the Chinese not to do it. Right in front of you. I've seen it done so many times because if you go to China, or excuse me, Canada, and you see an Asian, an Asian that you wouldn't think would talk to a black person in America, will sit next to and talk to a black person in Canada, but not even think about it. It could be the most criminal looking, Debo looking black guy ever. They'll sit right next to hey, how you doing? Da, da, da. And get a chick, blah, 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 like that. Nobody cares. In America, they tell them, throw six minutes to the black and if they do, the, the white person will sit there and look at you, and they'll give you this look like, I fucking hate you, you fucking nigger. They'll look at you like that. These people, and it's not all white people, it's, 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 certain, it's certain individuals that have a system set up to keep people in certain places, to manipulate everybody. This is to create a police state. They've got a huge internal surveillance system that they first tested out in England. They're setting one up right now in Seattle. They've got one in New York. It's got all over the country, just like Mussolini was doing. Now they got, and then they, then they got this, these citizens groups who are basically watchdogs for the government, going around looking at what people are doing. Oh, this guy's saying that, and this guy's doing that. You need to start watching and blah, 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 thinking that they're protecting themselves from this imaginary threat, when the real threat is the government all along, like, uh, like the movie Oblivion, where the tent was the threat all along. These guys are the threat. The governments are your enemies. They're doing this, this arbitrary detainment of people, arresting people for BS reasons, to keep you afraid keeping you afraid of everything and then they target people that are very influential they either try to discredit them they try to uh, kill them they arrest them on BS reasons a character assassination oh he's a fag he's a murderer she's fucking like 50 dudes this is what they're doing uh, they're doing it to uh, what's that girl Mimi Lahan Whenever she calls out some BS on Syria, there's a bunch of guys saying she's sucking dick, she's a whore, she works for the government, she's a murderer, CIA, she's a Jew, anything to, to discredit these people. And the press is just, it's, it's, you know the deal with that. Like, uh, working class society has got a video, and if you check the links, in the video, Al Jazeera is basically bought and paid for. Al Jazeera English. I don't know about the Arabic. But the English one is bought and paid for. So people looking for alternative media that are going there to look for, for a biased point of view are getting another CNN. 
This is the same thing that Mussolini did. And anybody who's calling them out, anybody who blows the whistle, is is basically not a patriot. They're not a patriot. They're a criminal. They're against America. They're treasonous. They're scumbag. If you don't approve of paying taxes so that people can gamble away the entire economy on your back, you're not down with that. You're anti-American. You're anti-British. You're anti-Australian. You're, you're just some scumbag. Or you're just some wacko with no friends. All these things are manipulative, narcissistic tactics. That's what these things are. And they're doing this to cause dissent. And this dissent into nothingness is going to break people to where they're basically going to be slaves. That's, that's another reason why they're attacking organized labor. They're attacking organized labor by looking at corrupt unions. And they're not talking about any sort of alternative organized labor. And they're trying to bust up unions at any cost. Like the hostess thing. The hostess thing. They basically broke up. They basically sold off the company to bust up the union. That was the whole, only reason they broke up their company. Because the company's still around. They're still making hostess foods. <laughs> they did that to bust up the union and come out on top with the profits for themselves. The executives made out like fat rats and busted up the unions and sold off the company to smaller companies that they own. So now they're union free with the hostess company intact. This is one of the things they're doing. And then they're making people that, that, that should be for unions, that should be for organized labor, they're making these people, they're making the people uh, go against it. So they're making people go, oh, unions are bullshit, bull unions suck. Unions ruining in the economy. These people are lazy. Blah 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 blah. It's like, what? How does this benefit you? If you're not rich, I don't understand why you're against the goddamn union. I don't understand why you why you want to work for a low wage. You're not gonna just magically get a better job. There's no mad. There, there are no good jobs out there. I mean, there are good jobs out there, but there there, there aren't tons of good jobs, especially for for uh, entry level people. Not everybody is is qualified to be a programmer at Google or Microsoft. Not everybody's a chemical engineer. Not everybody can work for Lehman. Not everybody can go out and be a project manager. Not everybody can go out and be a systems analyst. Can't do it. Some people are janitors. Some people are dock workers. Some people are only qualified to punch in, do their basic job, and go out on the floor and get it done. Like the McDonald's workers in New York. They should be making $15 an hour. Where the hell else are they going to work? They're getting priced out of the city, but they're the only people that can do the job. Where the hell are they going to stay? Pay them $15, 16 bucks an hour. I'm sure the amount of covers they do is more than enough to compensate them for that. But, but people are against organized labor because they've been brainwashed into thinking that it's it's going to make companies leave. When in reality, companies leave because people allow them enough power to wear. That people give up their power. You, when you give up your power, just like the people in China give up their power, you allow these companies to exploit the shit out of you. Now, if people in China were organized, if people were here were organized, then what, where would you go? You'd have to just pay people what you owe them. Instead of using different countries against people. Like with the Mexicans. And I talked about this years ago, and they, and they actually did, did it. They, they, they pay Mexicans now equal wages as they would a regular American because nobody else wanted to do the work. And they were doing a damn good job at it. So now when a Mexican works in a restaurant, when he's working out in the field, they're making twenty, thirty dollars an hour. They took the Mexicans out of here in Washington State, brought in a bunch of Jamaicans. They're paying them a huge wage because the Americans didn't want to go out there and make twenty dollars an hour picking strawberries and apples. 
All you have to do is go out there, drive out there to Carnation or wherever the hell it is, and pick up some goddamn apples. Really fast. You get twenty dollars an hour. You can suck. That's, you just do that for like a week and suck and have a nice, fat little check. Nobody wants to do that. You need to understand the power that you have in your labor, and you need to galvanize yourselves and work together for your benefit and stop kowtowing to the interest of corporations that don't have your interests at heart. Like with the Obamacare crap. The people should have taken to the street as soon as they got rid of the government option, even though the government option was bullshit. What they should have is HR 676, a universal program. There's, there should be things in place to benefit the people that give them incentive to work. As well as give corporations a little bit of a break to operate. Getting rid of health care by nationalizing would, would give them a break. It would get rid of the insurance companies, but who gives a shit? Fuck them. They can find other things to insure. Insure dentists. Insure optical. But keep medical universal. To benefit the society. Well, this is too utopian. Not enough profit, and it's really not just about profit. It's about controlling people, maintaining people, and breaking the societies. That's what they're doing in the Middle East right now. They're breaking them. They want to break you down, break your will, and then own you. Because once you break someone down culturally, break down the tribes, break down the people in Bali and Walid, you break these people down to nothing, you own them. Once you own them, then you don't have to worry about dissent because they don't have an identity anymore. They're just empty shells. This is my grandpa. This is my mom. This is my uncle. We used to live on 52 Third Street. That's your history. There's nothing to build on. Because since family is the, the, the root of organization, but the tribe, the ethnicity, has the foundation of power. It's one of the foundations of power. That's why Marcus Garvey tried to unify based on race. That's why Adolf Hitler unified based on German nationality. It was a German movement, not a white movement. But that's why white Americans are trying to galvanize on a white basis. And all that gets confused and construed, misconstrued. And they bring up racism and all this, and it gets distracted by anger and bitterness and then it never goes anywhere none of these people benefit the blacks don't benefit the germans didn't benefit well they got bombed to shit but the blacks don't benefit the poor whites don't benefit mexicans right now aren't benefiting with these kind of movements because they're not going in the right direction the muslims they're fighting over bullshit they're joining these groups they're being manipulated the people who are funding al-qaeda the people who are funding al-nusra the people who are funding the lifg this is what they care about, money. And they're using these people's anger, hate, and frustration to manipulate them, just like they're using Americans' hate and frustration to make them fight against their own interests. These things have to be addressed. You have to look at this aspect of everything. Because this is where the buck stops. Because the global confederacy is coming. And when it gets here, you need to have a safety net or you are fucked. And that's real.